Good afternoon. My name is Pierre Mullia. I'm the Executive Director of IMI, the Innovative Medicines Initiative. Uh, we have advisory bodies that are associated to IMI that are very important in the governance structure of IMI. So today I have the pleasure of being here with uh, Beatrice Silva-Lima, who is the chair of our scientific committee. Welcome, Beatrice and Marta gomez Cantania of the state's representatives groups. Marta, thank you for joining us. So how do the scientific committee and state representatives group contribute to shaping IMI's scientific priorities? Beatrice? Uh, well, the scientific committee uh, is uh, really very interested and very committed to discuss and to contribute for uh, the analysis and the advice on uh, research uh, uh, priorities. Uh, uh, they are discussed under meetings, they are discussed member, uh, among the members even outside the meetings, and proposals and, uh, are made uh, to IMI in terms of their incorporation on strategic research agenda, um, on the basis also of their alignment with the activities of Horizon 2020, and also um, advice advice is being uh, given in terms of their value and their incorporation in the annual, um, in your annual plans of the Innovative Medicines Initiative. Thank you, Beatrice. Marta, for the SRG. Well, the SRG contributes to the scientific priorities definition by giving our opinion from the very beginning when the ideas are brought into the table and also by contributing later on on the topic description. That's how we contribute. We contribute as uh, national representatives, but also giving su uh, we have the support of national strategies, we have stakeholders and experts that assess us into this duty, this very important duty, and also in relation with other national and regional activities that we have uh, at national or regional level. Thank you. So, uh, Marta, back to you on the SRG. One of the roles of the uh, SRG is to provide information to IMI and act as an interface uh, with stakeholders in member states and associated countries, and especially to SMEs, uh, a very important uh, stakeholder group for, for us. Could you tell us more concretely how your members do that? Well, we interact with national and regional stakeholders to assure that uh, First of all, our advice on scientific priorities is the right one in relation with what is done at national and regional level, and also to look for synergies and to avoid uh, gaps also and overlappings. We have to make sure that we are aligned with one strategy, so we make the most of the strategy at European, national and regional level. Also, and in relation with other stakeholders, we also make sure with our interface with the stakeholders, that uh, events like dissemination events, information events, workshops, events uh, to raise awareness, paying attention sometimes to certain groups like small and medium enterprises that are key in, in, in IMI. Also, in relation with our role at national level, we uh, give our opinions on the progress of IMI including its achievements and uh, how they go into the goals and advice also in, in relation with SMEs that uh, is important, putting into contact IMI office and relevant stakeholder organizations at national level. And uh, also giving advice on different programs that we deal with at national level. Thank you, Marta. So uh, IMI is now approaching its 10th uh, anniversary and we can already see some amazing uh, results from, uh, uh, from our projects. But also we have elements to uh, draw some lessons on the value of the public-private partnership uh, model itself. So Beatrice, in this context, what has been the added value or what is the added value of, I for, of IMI to the scientific community in Europe and maybe beyond Europe? The 
the input brought by IMI to the scientific community, in my view, is absolutely outstanding, and the, the scientific community has really benefited a lot for, uh, from this uh, initiative. Before IMI, it doesn't mean that there were no collaborations between uh, public and private sectors uh, working in specific projects, but now with IMI, uh, a, a more expanded horizontal, multi-stakeholder initiative and strategy has been put in place where scientific community is um, engaged as a partner discussing uh, in uh, the same uh, condition, uh, I would say, equally discussions, um, and very importantly, uh, driven to uh, resolve important uh, questions or aspects of bottlenecks. It doesn't mean that scientific community has not been engaging in this type of interests previously, but per definition, scientific community focus much more their work in deepening the knowledge which is being generated. By engaging with stakeholders, uh, particularly from pharmaceutical industry, uh, the scientific community has uh, benefited from acquiring also the mindset from the groups or the research groups that are generating knowledge, obviously, but at the same time are engaged to progress this knowledge for societal uh, benefit and patient access. On the other hand, I would say that the scientific community also might have benefited also of, of the possibility that has been acquired of better contributing for putting their uh, work at the service of community and society in areas where only the development by pharmaceutical industry could be of less interest and therefore has evolved less in the past. And a good example is really the amount of projects and the platform that has been created on antimicrobial resistance, where a group of projects under the umbrella of the so-called new drugs for bed, bed bugs have been issued addressing aspects that go from uh, basic research, trying to understand mechanisms for uh, antimicrobial resistance into uh, development aspects, trying to create uh, tools that could overcome, which could overcome those resistances, developing them as drugs, and this might be happening and will happen in the future. I would add here that even the societal benefit uh, of these uh, public-private partnerships has been enormous. Great. Thank you, Beatrice. So we uh, recently uh, had the first joint meeting of the Scientific Committee and the SRG. Uh, how... Uh, can these two advisory uh, bodies uh, collaborate? I think there is full of possibilities, this collaboration. We had the first meeting and it was a great meeting in my opinion and I think it's shared with you too because first of all we have to know the each other to collaborate. So a, a meeting in which we were in the same meeting room discussing things together in the agenda was very helpful to know each other and to know what motivates us to give the input we, we give also. We comment on the same issues in some cases, like the scientific priorities, the work plans. So it's good to discuss openly what are our views from national perspective and scientific per perspective. Some on are com common and some others are from different perspectives. So it's good to understand others to enrich our knowledge of what is being discussed. Also, there are issues that should be done together, that the scientific committee alone or the SRG alone or IMI office alone can perform correctly together, like the SME strategy. We have to work together to understand what is attractive from the scientific point of view for SMEs to join, what, what, what can we do at national level to attract them, to explain them better, or to engage with the relevant stakeholders to make them understand better IMI and also to liaise with them and make you aware of who's at national level doing what so we can align also the strategies in that regard. There is one aspect that I would not like to finalize without referring, which is this could be very important uh, achievement also and the motivating one to 
sensi sensibilize society and scientific communities in general that the achievements by IMI, by IMI are not just targeting those who have been sponsored and granted to generate them because the assets which are being generated are assets that will benefit the scientific community in general because they will be able to be using the platforms that are, are being generated and the assets and at the same time the access of the society to all these deliveries and the final benefits will be enormous. So my motivation will be to see all this happening uh, along the time that IMI will continue and I hope it will be a long time. <laughs> Beatrice, thank you. thank you for bringing all of the wealth of expertise you bring uh, to the Science Committee and of course your leadership uh, in that regard. Uh, and thank you both very much for this uh, little interview and of course for all the things you do for, uh, for IMI which is, is enormous and uh, we are indebted to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.